Today we're going to talk about what it means and more importantly, what to do if your ex reads your text messages but doesn't reply. So how exactly does this concept work? Well, you spend a lot of time crafting the perfect text message on your phone. You send the text to your ex and then you do the most difficult thing. You wait to see if they'll respond. You can see if they have read your text message or not, and over time you notice they have read your text message. But as hours go by, you begin to notice that they haven't responded to your text messages. Now, generally speaking, we see this happen a lot on two main platforms. Number one is just regular text messages where you can actually have your read receipts on. And number two is through the platform WhatsApp. So today, like I said, what we're going to do is explore why your ex is reading your text messages but not responding, and then after we have a greater understanding of why that is, we're going to focus on how to actually get them to respond to your text messages. First things first though, if you haven't already, make sure you stop everything you're doing and take our ex recovery chances quiz on my website, www.exboyfriendrecovery.com. It's a simple two minute quiz designed to tell you what kind of chance you have of getting your ex back so you know you're not wasting your time in this endeavor. Now taking this quiz is super simple. All you have to do is simply look in the description link below this YouTube video and click on it. See? Simple. So let's tackle the big question first. Why does your ex read your text messages but not respond? In my experience, there are three primary motivations behind why they would do this. Motivation number one, the timing just simply isn't right. This is actually a problem that we had with a recent coaching client of mine where we actually crafted what I believe to be the perfect text message to get her ex to bite into a conversation. The problem is she texted her ex when he was visiting his family. And if you knew anything about their situation, you would know that he doesn't like his family to be around at all when the two of them talk. And so she sends the text message and he doesn't reply. So we were thinking, well, why? Ultimately, later on in that day, he posted a status or a picture of him going home for his family. That was when the bell rang for us and we realized that we may have picked the wrong time to text her ex. So I always try to advise my clients to guess at when the best time would be to text their ex. Don't text him or her when she or he is at work or when they are in cahoots with their family doing some outing outside where they're not likely to respond. Now, sometimes this is a bit of a guessing game because you have no way of knowing what your ex is really up to other than just trying to take a shot. But generally speaking, over the years, you'll have an idea of what your ex's schedule will look like as well as what patterns they exhibit when they're engaged in their schedule. So that will tell you that, hey, maybe between the times of 9 p.m. and midnight, they're gonna be open and have nothing to do. Maybe that's the best time to text them for a response. But often timing or when you send your text message has nothing to do with why they won't respond. Going down the rabbit hole deeper into why the second motivation we see happening while people won't respond to your text messages has to do with the baggage that you have left over from your breakup. Now, what's interesting is over the years I've learned that the five stages of grief, while accurate in our assessments of how people cope with breakups, don't always occur in the quote unquote correct stages. Sometimes anger lasts a lot longer than you would expect. And sometimes they go from acceptance to anger back to acceptance again. It's all kind of wonky. But one thing we've learned is that if you went through a bad breakup with your ex, if there's a lot of baggage there, sometimes they just don't want to talk to you. Now, I suppose you could even lock this in with timing as a reason for why they wouldn't want to talk to you, but we have good reason to believe that it's more about the baggage of your breakup. So typically speaking, if you're sending a text message to your ex, they're reading it and not responding to it, a lot of the reason is because they're still holding a grudge over how the breakup went down or how they were treated in the relationship. Now, to make matters even more complicated, a lot of women will come to me and say, Chris, my ex broke up with me. Why would he be holding a grudge at me? Often I tell them, well, look, men often paint themselves in the victim role when they go through a breakup. In their minds, they think, well, you made me break up with you. 
I know, it doesn't make much sense, but really breakups don't make a lot of sense if you really think about it. We're all going through these crazy emotional states, swinging the pendulum from one state to the next, so it's not completely out of the ordinary for an ex, even if they've broken up with you, to sit there and think, well, you know what, it's your fault. You made me do this. You're hurting me. You're the object of my pain. And even though they broke up with you, they don't want to talk to you. Now, the third motivation just happens to be what I think the number one reason is for why exes don't respond to you. And that is, your text message just sucked. Throughout our relationships, we have a tendency as human beings to grow a bit complacent. We get used to the normal patterns of routine that we're going through on a daily basis. It's completely normal in a relationship to start a text message conversation with, hey, or hey, what's up? But the rules are a little bit different when you go through a breakup. Sometimes people don't realize this and they try to text their ex in the same way they would as if they were in a relationship, very complacently. So if you're texting your ex with not a lot of thought behind your text or not a lot of curiosity embedded into it, a lot of times your text message just isn't enough to yield a response. They're thinking, well, I don't want to talk this way. I want to talk about maybe a more emotional topic. They'll look at your text, they'll read it, and then they simply won't respond. Now, a lot of women, when this happens to them, they start panicking as if my ex doesn't want to talk to me but that's not what it is. Your ex just doesn't want to talk to you if your conversation is gonna act in this way. So sometimes you have to catch your ex off guard a little bit and create a bit of a hook to get them to want to talk to you. Now, the obvious next question you would have is, well, how do you do that? So that's what we're gonna talk about. Now, getting your ex to reply to your text messages is a function of doing four things. And the beauty of these four things is the fact that it's taking a lot of the criticisms or a lot of the reasons for why your ex read your text but didn't respond head on and using them as an advantage. Thing number one, you need to first complete a no contact rule before you reach out to your ex. This totally helps with the baggage aspect of the entire program. So think of it like this. Your ex is holding a huge grudge over you breaking up with them or them breaking up with you. The baggage of the relationship just makes them not want to reply to you. So oftentimes the best way to handle a situation where that is happening is to go straight into a no contact rule. A self-imposed no contact where you don't reply or even reach out to your ex for a certain period of time. Now, there's a lot of different psychological reasons for why this works. A lot of people look at it and say, you know what, this is a great way to make them miss me, but we found the opposite is actually true. It's a great time for you to focus on yourself as opposed to focusing on your ex, which in turn, when you do get back in contact with them, they're looking at you like maybe a new version of yourself. But more than anything, what it can help with in this particular situation is that it's giving you enough time for them to calm down about the baggage that they may be holding on to from the previous relationship. Thing number two, every first contact text message needs embedded curiosity. In other words, there needs to be an interesting reason for why your ex would want to respond. So embedded curiosity simply means that there's an unanswered question that your ex wants to get answered. Oftentimes I pointed to the psychological concept of the Zygarnik effect, which is this concept that states that people remember interrupted or incomplete tasks better than completed ones. Hollywood has gone to town on this idea with their introduction of cliffhangers at the end of their TV show episodes. Do something for me. The next time you're actually watching a television show, sit back and watch how each episode ends. You'll notice that what they're doing is ending every episode on a cliffhanger, on an unanswered question that makes the viewer think, what happens next? Now, when it comes to sending your ex a text message that gets them to not only read and respond, it's not about sending an unanswered question totally, it's about embedding enough curiosity to make them want to respond to find out what you want. Now, a lot of women, and men for that matter, have difficulty on figuring out how to do this. Well, luckily, that's where thing number three comes into play. Thing number three, utilize the damsel in distress text message. A few years ago, my wife came up with this idea of a damsel in distress 
text message. Essentially, it's a text message that taps into a hero complex of an ex and makes them want to respond. We actually just started mentioning this idea in passing, but a few women in our private Facebook support group took it to heart and just started trying all sorts of damsel in distress messages out on their exes. And one thing that we couldn't ignore and they couldn't ignore was how successful the messages were and how quickly they got responses. But like with anything else, there's a way to overdo this and there's a way to not do it properly. So what I'd like to do for you today is actually show you a few of our most successful damsel in distress text messages that you can probably utilize to get a response out of your ex. Now, what you'll also notice is that each one of these damsel in distress messages taps into your ex's curiosity complex. So here's the first one. I need your insert here expertise. So the insert here can be anything. It could be cooking, it could be running, it could be anything that really matters a lot to your ex. The whole point is that you are asking your ex's advice on something, thereby making him the hero to give you that advice. Here's the second text message. I have a big problem and only really trust you for an answer. This is one of the most direct versions of a damsel in distress text message, but it works extremely well to gain responses from exes who really have been on the fence before. Now the thing with this text message is that you really need to have a problem to be able to solve. We used to tell people to just tell a little white lie, but we found that people really couldn't keep track of their white lies or their white lies were too ridiculous to be believed, so we always now try to ground it in reality by making a problem that may be a little bit worse than it has to be. Now, you can debate the morals on it, but I'll, let's just chalk it up to flirting. Now, there is one final thing that you need to do once you gain a response from your ex, and that's thing number four. Your entire goal is to have a positive conversation with your ex. So a lot of people look at text messages as the be all end all for their chances with their ex. My ex is reading, but not responding. So they start focusing in on a specific text message to get them to respond as if they're guaranteed to have a positive interaction afterwards. What you really need to do here is have a paradigm shift in your thinking. Do not view the damsel in distress text message or whatever text message that you use to embed more curiosity to make your ex want to respond as the entire game. It's a simple tool to get your ex engaged in a conversation that hopefully goes positively. By setting a clear, realistic goal of just having a normal, positive conversation with your ex, it seems a lot more achievable and is not as intimidating. Sure, you want to get your ex to read and respond to your text messages, but let's be honest, you want something more than that. You want to have a real life conversation with them. Now, my best piece of advice with having a real life conversation with your ex is not to plan it all out ahead. We've tried that in the past and it always blows up in our clients' faces because there are so many variables behind how a conversation will go, it's impossible to plan for them all. Instead, just go in and try to have fun with the conversation. The one thing that we will tell you is try to keep your text messages as interesting as possible. Every single text message that you send needs to be one that can have a response to it. Don't just say some blanket statement and end the conversation two text messages deep into the conversation. Say something a little bit open-ended that your ex can hook into and respond to. Again, your goal is just to have a clear, positive interaction with your ex. Other thing we want you to do is end the conversation first. Whenever possible, once you feel you've achieved your goal, you've had a pleasant, short conversation with your ex, end the conversation first. That will hopefully create this sort of unanswered question I was talking about that can get your ex to reach out to you next time. Hey there, thank you so much for getting to the end of this video. If you haven't already, make sure you take that quiz I was talking about at the beginning of the video. It's called the X Recovery Chances Quiz, and it will tell you what kind of chance you have of getting your ex back and whether or not you're wasting your time. Simply look in the description link below this YouTube video and click on it if that's something that you're interested. Okay, that's it. That will do it for this video, but if you haven't already, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to our channel and this YouTube video. It would be greatly appreciated.